Hello. It's afternoon run time again. Um, it's uh, it's Saturday. I think it's the 15th. Um, and my last fight was on the 1st. And then I was supposed to fight on Wednesday of this week. Um, but when we got to the venue, there were no fights. Like, there was no show. Dan was really pissed off. He, uh, he called his contact. This guy has actually canceled on us before, but... I thought that was short notice before because it was like a few hours before the fight. So I guess now he just doesn't call at all. Uh, but it was disappointing. I mean, I obviously wanted to fight. I definitely wanted to get another fight in before my fight on the 28th. Um, but <clears throat> the entire fight was canceled. Like the whole show was canceled. So I think that is an issue of ticket sales or, you know, the possibility of losing money having to pay all of the fighters and not really having anyone going to it. Um, it's kind of hard to promote on Wednesdays. Uh, but, I mean, the thing about having 46 fights is that, you know, none of them are super, super built up or huge deals in any way. It's like a process. So I don't get super excited about individual fights, and I also don't get super upset when they're canceled. Um, I mean, I'd, I would rather have fought, and I definitely would rather have had another fight to replace it. Um, but, you know, I don't get bent out of shape. It's not like I was training for weeks and weeks for this one thing, and it fell through, which... It's far, far more disappointing when you actually, like, miss a fight. Um, so, it sucks, but, you know, moving on. Um, but <laughs> what kind of bothers me is that now my next fight is on the 28th. Um, and it's a big card. It's, again, through the same promoter who um, hooked me up for the Nongbu Alampu fight in Asan. Um, so I'm fighting on a really big card. I don't think that my fight will be televised. Um, but they said that about my Nongbu Alampu fight, and then it was. So, I don't know, but it doesn't matter. The point is, um, on this same card is Sanchai and Nong Tum, who's really better known as the beautiful boxer. Um, but she trained at Kiat Busaba, which is my camp, um, back when she was, you know, going through her transitions and all these things. So that's really cool. Um, I saw the beautiful boxer years ago, like when I first started Muay Thai, and I thought it was such a cool story, and I never connected it to Lana because it's not called... <laughs> Lana in the movie, and it's not called Kiat Busaba in the movie. Um, and it wasn't until after I had already trained at Lana that I realized that that was her camp, and that was Chiang Mai, and that was the Doi Sutep Temple, and all these things. So um, I never thought I'd see her fight, because she doesn't fight anymore. But this is her, like, comeback fight, um, which is super exciting. And Sanchai is awesome, too, so it's... How cool is that? Um, but, so... Um, when my fight was canceled on Wednesday, I told Dan, just give me a fight on Saturday, no big deal. Um, and he wasn't able to do that through complications with the promoters. Um, and so he said, we'll just skip it and, uh, you know, just work really hard up until his next fight, which I don't like building up fights. Uh, that kind of happened with the Nongbu Lumpu fight, too, where they were like, we don't want you to fight too close to it. Um, and it kind of, I don't know, messes with my head tonight, f not fight often because that's my rhythm. Um, and it kind of lends towards building stuff up. I don't know, it's just like a mental challenge. But that's something i got to work on too, so we'll cash it in as a good experience. Um, but what's really cool about that is that my training has changed uh, because they're focusing on, you know, getting me real hard for this fight, so uh, I'm running more. Dang is beating the crap out of me, like, every day. Um, I put up a video of his knee exercise that he's giving me, uh, which is, I throw knees really hard into his belly pad and he punches me as hard as he can, well, not as hard as he can, but really hard in the stomach at the same time. Um, it's difficult, it goes for a full round, which is five minutes at our camp. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's good, it definitely desensitizes you to the point where you don't mind as much getting hit in the stomach and you don't fear it, and there's not flinching. He told me blocking your stomach is stupid, that Muay Thai fighters don't do it, that that's like a Western boxing thing. Um, so he, uh, he hits me in the head when I, when I block my stomach when he's trying to hit it, so that's good. Um, getting some sparring, some really good like aggressive sparring in that's helping, um, and doing like a gajillion sit-ups um, to be stronger in my middle so that I can get jabbed and punched and need there more. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a formative experience at the moment, which is really good. Um, I like when that happens. 
because uh, when my trainers have a plan, when they're like trying to construct something, it feels really good. Um, I had a hard time, still have a hard time, because um, I want to do Master K's Muay Thai and Master K wants me to be a certain type of fighter and I'm not that kind of fighter, so it's a... Uh, to say it's an uphill battle is kind of an understatement. He wants me to jump around, hop around, be really fast and evasive. I am not an evasive fighter. I am the like raging bull of tiny Muay Thai fighters. I just, you know, have to take the hits to get in and, and plow forward. Um, but, you know, Dang sees that as a strength and so he's kind of uh, building exercises and, and training around just getting me to go forward and be tough and like the you know, man of steel approach rather than, rather than the evasive type, because I'm just not. Um, so Dan actually had me doing these teeps, um, which he had seen one of my teammates' opponents knock him out with. Um, and so I was working on those for, I don't know, like two weeks. And then uh, Dang was like, Sylvie does not stay back the way you would need to in order for these teeps to really kind of work, she doesn't wait for someone to come to her, because nobody comes to me, they all just run. Um, so instead, I have to hide them in the way that I, you know, move. So that was cool, to, uh, to adjust something to the way I am, rather than tell me that I'm wrong. Because <laughs> there are different kinds of fighters, you know, Sakban Kon is a go-forward fighter. Uh, Jong Sunan, man, that guy goes forward. Um, so I guess I'm more in that camp than in the, you know, beautiful dancing around never getting hit camp. Um, and, you know, you just gotta be who you are, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's hot, um, sweaty, and, uh, I gotta finish my run, so I'll talk to you guys soon. Um, the fight, again, is on the 28th, which is a Friday. It's, um, gonna be held at the 700-year stadium right here in Chiang Mai, so I get to kind of represent Chiang Mai as the local fighter, uh, even though I am definitely... <laughs> the farong <laughs> in that situation, um, but it's cool, I'm excited, I love fighting, so uh, I'll get my three fights in next month and be at 50, which is pretty cool, so I'll talk to you guys later, bye.